In 2006, Nintendo returned to the 2D Mario series after 16 years with the release of New Super Mario Bros. on the DS. Fast forward three years to 2009, and they did it again, this time on the Wii, incorporating a bunch of new ideas and even adding four-player couch co-op. And then in 2012, they did it again, twice. Nintendo released two New Super Mario Bros. games in the same year. The first was New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS, which I've already covered in another video, and the other game that followed only a few months after that is the topic of today's video. Nintendo's main launch title for the Wii U, very appropriately named New Super Mario Bros. U. This game isn't one I often see people look back on that positively, despite it selling pretty well on the Wii U and even better on the Switch. So just like I did with New Super Mario Bros. 2 a while back, in this video I'm going to be answering one simple question. Is New Super Mario Bros. U bad? Initially released on November 18th, 2012 as a launch title for the Wii U, and then re-released as a port on January 11th, 2019 for the Nintendo Switch, New Super Mario Bros. U is the fourth entry in the New Super Mario Bros. series. Development for this game started right after the release of New Super Mario Bros. Wii and spanned about three years. The first we ever heard of this game's existence was at E3 2011, where it was available as one of the many playable Wii U tech demos meant to show off the gamepad's functionality. At this E3 event though, the game was weirdly titled New Super Mario Bros. Me, instead of the name we all know it as today, most likely because of the many Mii's present in the demo. However, a year later at E3 2012, the game was fully revealed, now with its final name, New Super Mario Bros. U. The opening for this game starts off just like any other. Mario, Luigi, and some friends are enjoying a meal, but as you probably expected, are rudely interrupted by Bowser and his giant hand thing. Now where most Mario games would see Bowser using this hand to grab Peach and escape back to his fiery kingdom, New Super Mario Bros. U shakes things up a little, something this series desperately needed. And instead of kidnapping Peach, Bowser instead grabs Mario and friends, hurling them miles away from the Mushroom Kingdom, hoping to never see them again. This change of pace is amazing. It always annoyed me how every New Super Mario Bros. game up to this point always had you start in the Mushroom Kingdom. It was one of the things that made these games blend in at times. But this change isn't without flaw. Despite Bowser throwing them far away from the grassy plains of the Mushroom Kingdom, opening up the possibility to start in a completely new environment, the game has you instead land in another grassy plain, an area referred to as Eggcorn Plains. I would have absolutely loved if this game started in say a mountain world or ice world or just anything that isn't Eggcorn Plains, as it would have been something fresh and unique. But I guess not starting in the Mushroom Kingdom is a plus. While on the topic of worlds though, New Super Mario Bros. U returns to an idea we haven't seen since Super Mario World and connects all eight worlds together, creating a giant world map allowing the player to travel to each world seamlessly. This has always been one of my favorite things about the game. It's so nice to zoom out and see where you are in proportion to everything else, but also where you're going next if you're playing the game for the first time. And while this idea isn't executed perfectly, with the change from Desert World to Snow World being very jarring, a lot of them are done very well and overall make the world feel lively and connected. I mean, just look at a fully zoomed out version of the map. You can spot so many little details and secrets spread all throughout. It's incredible. One of the absolute best new additions with this connected map though has to be the secret exits. In previous New Super Mario Bros. games, a lot of secret exits would lead to cannons. These cannons would allow you to skip entire worlds with relative ease. However, in this game, cannons are completely removed, with secret exits now unlocking paths that lead to the new world, and along the way forcing you to tackle a level relative to the area you're in to show your skills and prove you're ready for the next world. For example, the secret exit in 1-2 brings you to world 5. However, to make your way there, you pass around world 4, the beach world, and to prove you can survive in world 5, you have to take on a world 4 themed level, which is just so cool. But enough about the world map, let's get into the bulk of what matters in a 2D Mario game, the levels. Starting off with the first level, it's okay, but out of every single new Super Mario Bros opening level, this has got to be the most forgettable to me. It introduces the new power-up of the game, the Super Acorn, pretty well, but it doesn't have the distinct thing that all the others have. DS had the Mega Mushroom section that let you destroy huge parts of the level. Wii had those spinning hills with secret pipes inside. And New Super Mario Bros. 2 had the music blocks and those colorful Mario 3 inspired blocks. All New Super Mario Bros. U has is, uh, squirrels? The first level of a 2D Mario game should have something memorable in it. Something that should at least make you go, oh this is cool. But instead all we got here is some flying squirrels and Goombas. 
This is really unfortunate because the game genuinely has a ton of good levels throughout its runtime. Some of the absolute best being Layer Cake Desert Dash 5, Dry Desert Mushrooms. This level is entirely based around the spike enemies. They're placed high above you and you have to make your way through the level constantly avoiding them and trying to determine when they'll drop their spiky rocks so that you can make it through unharmed. Later in the level, the spikes are atop these extending and retracting mushrooms that allow them to drop rocks even more randomly. The end of the level has a ton of them above you at once, forcing you to be very precise about your movement. Frosted Glacier's first level, Star Spinning Sky, has you platforming across a bunch of spinning stars, as you would probably expect from the name, that light up the stage with their beautiful glow. The setting of this stage, and also the entire world, is an amazing take on the snow world theme. These levels take place at night in a snowy mountain setting, with the pack runs filled with bright stars and tall trees. The end of the level makes great use of munchers, encouraging you to platform safely across the stars without falling. However, if you look around and find a secret area, you can get a star that lets you effortlessly cross the munchers without a problem as a reward for exploring the level well. Sparkling Waters has this haunted ghost ship level that I absolutely adore. Not only is the idea extremely unique, it's executed insanely well. You have the underwater section that sees you avoiding groups of boos, a pole jumping section where you have to land on a variety of floating boxes, and a maze at the end of the level that's filled with secrets. Levels like these give me hope for 2D Mario. There's a lot of potential for greatness in the series. The end of the level also has this amazing backdrop, showing a full 3D model of the haunted shipwreck with this gloomy lighting. I love it. This level also has a secret exit, and this secret exit leads you to one of the coolest levels in the game, Skyward Stock. This level is not only amazing because of its unique idea, but also how it correlates to the secret exit. The world map shows a huge beanstalk that leads high up into marine clouds, which is exactly what you do in the level. Climb up a giant beanstalk into the clouds. I wish more levels in this game did something similar to this. It makes great use of the world map. And the level itself is great. Usually auto-scrollers are very lame and slow, but this one is actually fun. And I mean, who couldn't love these little balloon Goombas? But by far out of every level in this game, the absolute best has to be Soda Jungle's Painted Swampland. The level has an entirely new art style that's inspired by the famous Starry Night painting by Vincent van Gogh. I absolutely love this. There's so much character present in just the graphics of this level alone. The entire time I play this, I'm always looking at the background and just appreciating how well it's done. Could you imagine an entire world based on this style? It would be nothing short of incredible. But that's not the only great thing about this level. In order to progress through the game, you have to find this stage's secret exit, as the regular exit literally just leads nowhere. Back in my Mario Galaxy video, I talked about how a good game is able to teach the player core mechanics without interrupting the flow of gameplay with text boxes and long-winded tutorials. And this is another great example of that. While the game could stop you and let you know, oh hey, some levels have secret exits, Mario U says nah, we're gonna make you look for them. You are required to explore this level. This level is just so good in so many different ways. So yeah, overall, a lot of the levels in the game are great. But you know what's even better? Yoshi. Baby Yoshi. Making the return from Super Mario World, albeit functioning entirely differently, New Super Mario Bros. U reintroduces the Baby Yoshis to 2D Mario. Originally in Super Mario World, the Baby Yoshis were nothing more than the name implies. Baby Yoshis. Your goal with them was to feed them enough so that they would grow into an adult Yoshi. However, in Mario U, the Baby Yoshis have an entirely new purpose. Now unable to grow up, the Baby Yoshis have three different variants, all with their own ability. The Balloon Baby Yoshi, first found in Eggcorn Plains, offers, well, a balloon power, expanding into a giant big Yoshi when you shake the controller, allowing for a lot of vertical movement options. The Bubble Baby Yoshi, first found in Frosted Glacier, creates a bunch of bubbles when you shake the controller. These bubbles will instantly defeat any enemy they touch, offering coins and occasionally 1-ups to the player. You can also gain a little bit of height if you jump off these bubbles, but not much. The last and final Baby Yoshi, the Glowing Baby Yoshi, uh, glows. That, that's all it does. Unlike Yoshi, you can actually take these Baby Yoshis into different levels and use their abilities throughout the entire game. Well, except the glowing one. Y you can't take that one out of level, sadly. Although it's really unfortunate regular Yoshi still can't be taken out of levels, I love being able to take these little guys across the entire game. It adds a lot of strategy to how the player will approach certain levels. The only levels you can't take these guys into are castle levels, which makes sense. It might be a little overpowered to be able to turn Boom Boom and the Koopalings into a bubble at the shake of a controller. Oh yeah, Boom Boom and the Koopalings are back! 
Boom Boom, now making his first appearance in 2D Mario since Super Mario Bros. 3, acts as the mid-castle boss for most of the worlds throughout the game. Your first battle with him is simple enough. However, over the course of each and every world, he becomes stronger and stronger, with Kamek giving him more ways of attacking you. I would love to say this makes his fights more interesting, but they really don't. Once you hit Boom Boom down once, you've practically won the fight, as you can just jump on him right when he gets back up another two times to finish him off. I think his fights would have been leagues more interesting if he had invincibility frames when getting up, as he might actually pose a threat that way. All in all though, I was glad to see him return. He's much better than fighting the Koopalings twice per world like in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and a lot better than the Rhinos from New Super Mario Bros. 2. The Koopalings, now making their third appearance in the New Super Mario Bros. series, are actually done extremely well this time. Their castle levels are a lot better, with Ludwigs being my personal favorite, and the fights themselves are the best Koopalings fights in 2D Mario. Instead of just fighting them in a room at the end of the castle, each Koopaling has their own ship now that you shoot into at the end of every castle level to fight them. These ships also change depending on the character, which is something I love. It makes the Koopalings feel more distinct and shows actual character, even if it is incredibly minor. Lemmy's fight is the first, and easily the most simple. His ship doesn't have anything fancy, and he just kind of throws bombs at you. However, other Koopalings fights get a bit more interesting. In World 2, Morton summons a giant pokey and hits parts of it at the player. In World 3, Wendy has an ice rink in her ship with icicles that fall from the top as the fight goes on. In World 6 and 7, Roy and Ludwig have fights that take place on top of their ship. With Roy summoning platforms and shooting bullet bills, and Ludwig creating clones of himself to try and trick the player. I absolutely love how unique these fights are. They incorporate parts of the Koopalings characters into the fight, and also make the setting completely new and creative for the series. These fights do not get nearly enough credit. I loved them. And while on the topic of things in this game that didn't get nearly enough credit, we have the challenge mode. Challenge mode is a side mode separate from the main game that sees you well doing a variety of challenges. In the Wii U version, there are five categories of challenges. Time attack, coin collection, one-up rally, special, and boost mode. The Nintendo Switch port of the game straight up removed the boost mode challenges as they were meant to be played with the Wii U gamepad. But you aren't really missing much if you don't own the Wii U version. I never hear people talking about the challenges in this game anymore, which is a real shame, because they are absolutely one of the best things this game has to offer. Most of the challenges take tons of pre-existing stages in the game and add incredibly fun new clear conditions to them. For example, one of the special category challenges takes place in the first level of Soda Jungle. And to complete the challenge, you have to make use of the Super Egg Corn and clear the entire level without touching the ground. Something I literally never thought would be possible when I played the stage in the base game. Another special challenge, Big Air at Sundown, sees you making use of the Mini Mushroom, using it to clear the entirety of a snake block stage without touching the snake blocks. I absolutely love this challenge. You have to use the paratroopers and other enemies spread all throughout the level as landing pads. This challenge is not only extremely fun, but it demonstrates to the player one of the many ways the Mini Mushroom works incredibly seamlessly. As you progress through these challenges and complete and unlock more of them, they get harder and harder, forcing you to get an even better understanding of Mario's movement and how to best use it to your advantage. One of the harder challenges I was never able to beat as a kid was Larry's Groundless Battle. The challenge sees the player having to beat Larry Koopa's Koopaling fight without touching the ground at all, only being able to land on the water geysers that shoot up every so often. This challenge is incredibly difficult and is only a taste of how hard these challenges can get. Please try out this game's challenge mode if you never have, it's very much worth it. The other two side modes this game has to offer are Boost Rush and Coin Battle. I never really enjoyed either of these modes, but I'm still glad they're in the game. Boost Rush sees you journeying through different level packs similar to Coin Rush and New Super Mario Bros. 2, with the screen scrolling faster the more coins you collect. Coin Battle is a co-op only mode where you, uh, battle for coins. I never really played this mode much as a kid because whenever I played the game with friends, we strictly stuck to the main game and pissed each other off by throwing each other off the stage. Overall though, I think the inclusion of three side modes is amazing. It adds a lot of stuff for the player to do outside of the base game, with the challenge mode being the absolute best mode the new Super Mario Bros. series has ever done. But returning back to the main game, we have without a doubt the best final world in 2D Mario history, Peach's Castle. Throughout the game, you see the castle slowly fade into the control of Bowser. First the flags are changed, then a storm is created around it, and then finally the storm fully consumes the castle, shrouding it from outside light. 
By the time you reach the castle, the place is absolutely ruined by Bowser. The water moat surrounding it has been replaced with lava, and all the toads have vanished from the place. It's so cool to see the castle like this, especially in a 2D Mario game. One of the coolest things they did here has to be the world map theme though. It's a sped up, more menacing, Bowser-like version of the Peach's Castle theme from Super Mario 64. Take a listen. The levels here are great, especially the elevator stage, which sees you ascending the castle avoiding enemies on this platform that you control by tilting the controller. But I can't help but wish we saw a remake or reimagining of previous levels that took place near Peach's Castle and other 2D Mario games. Maybe we could have seen something like New Super Mario Bros. Wii's first level, but it's filled with lava and volcanic eruptions or something. It would have been so cool. Moving on to the final level itself, it's great, but pretty short. Bowser Jr. is here, and he uses his clown car to try to crush you and throw you into the lava. And just as soon as it's getting good and you start to understand how Bowser Jr. works and you're ready for more, it's over. I would have loved for there to be so much more to this level. There was tons of potential for a really challenging stage here, but maybe they wanted the focus here to be on the Bowser fight itself, which is absolutely incredible. Similar to almost every 2D Mario game before it, the fight starts off with the classic face-off between Mario and Bowser, which is over in about 4 seconds. Seriously, you'd think Bowser would learn to stop jumping in the air like that during these fights. I mean, I can understand the first couple times, but like still? You're still doing that, Bowser? It's kind of embarrassing if you ask me. But onto the true final Bowser fight, it's a ton of fun. Bowser grows to an enormous size, and you fight him accompanied by Bowser Jr. on top of the castle. To deal damage to him, you have to literally steal Bowser Jr.'s clown car, and deck Bowser in the head with it three times. It's a very cool way to deal damage, but man, I always loved how menacing Bowser is throughout this fight. He walks so arrogantly and once you hit him goes into his shell and starts bouncing around like crazy, taking up like a fourth of the screen at times. Once he's out of his shell, he lets out a massive roar, shooting tons of fireballs into the air. It's so cool. This doesn't top New Super Mario Bros. Wii's fight for me, but it's definitely high up there for best 2D Mario Bowser fight. I love how Bowser Jr. is here too. He hasn't been in a final Bowser fight since New Super Mario Bros. on the DS, and he works really well here. It's sometimes actually tough to avoid both of them at the same time. But the fight isn't too hard. After a few bonks to the head, Bowser goes down, letting out a final roar before he falls into the depths of the castle. Following not soon after his father, Bowser Jr. also descends into the depths of the castle. Although not due to Mario defeating him, he just kinda accepted his fate, bringing an end to the amazing fight. New Super Mario Bros. U is a game I played a lot throughout my childhood. It was the first game I got for the Wii U in 2012, and was one of my favorites to play with friends. Looking back on it though, it's not perfect. There's a lot about this game that just feels a little uninspired. I mean sure it had some great levels, but a lot are pretty average, and some just straight up boring. But amongst all the uninspired design choices, there's a lot to love about this game. The interconnected world map brings everything together and makes the world feel more lively. The Koopalings are handled extremely well and have actual good fights. The Baby Yoshis are a fun new addition that adds strategy to the levels. The challenge mode is some of the most fun I've had with 2D Mario, and the final world and boss fight are masterfully well done. New Super Mario Bros. U may not be the best 2D Mario game, nor the best New Super Mario Bros. game, but there's no doubt I didn't enjoy my time with this game. So to answer the question posed at the very beginning of this video, is New Super Mario Bros. U bad? Absolutely not.